Into the wild I'll go, and into the wild I am. It's been a while, freedom child, since I left my roots back home. Into the wild I'll go, and into the wild I am. It's been a while, freedom child, since I left my roots back home. Welcome to the Free Birth Society podcast. This is a radical space for women who are ready to celebrate their autonomous choices in birth, motherhood, and beyond. Together, we'll learn about wild birth through personal narrative, we'll explore the politics of birth, and we'll analyze everything that relates to our lives as women from a feminist perspective. Here's your host, Emily Saldea. It's been a wild freedom child since I've left my rules back home. Welcome, who you am. Thank you, Emily. I'm super happy to be here. And uh, yeah, I just want to say the podcast has been so special in my journey. So yeah, it makes it very special, even more special to be here with you and share the space. And I guess the podcast is how we were able to even meet at MRF a couple of years ago. Yes, 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 mm, exactly. In my cool. journey to, to my birth. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Well, take us at the beginning. Who are you before you become a mom? And what leads you into this crazy, crazy thing called free birth? <laughs> oh my God, who I was. Um, so at a time we were living in Montreal, Canada with uh my husband and i was i guess i was yeah completely different person i was sold a lie that uh the definition of success was to get a university degree and get a high paying job you know in a corporation and just climb uh the corporate ladder so i was working toward that and you know my everyday goal was to performing at my job and i was completely disconnected from my womb obviously i was you know on the pill for some years now because that's the thing you have to do right so so i was yeah just completely disconnected from my 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 feminine and my wound and uh yeah my health in general i would say until uh the time where we felt with my husband that we wanted to start our family um and as a performer i decided that i had to optimize my fertility so i decided to read about it so that i can get pregnant as soon as possible and this is i guess this is where a whole new world opened to me and i discovered uh yeah things that i've never knew before you know my early 30s and i was just so frustrated angry at myself and did not understand how i didn't know that about my you know the like what physiology what are you referring to what do you discover that you're so upset about just the effect of the birth control pill mm. for example on the body and just that you can you know your body is giving you signals you know in my new menstrual cycle at any point like just the basic things of your menstrual cycle uh i up to that point for me my period was just a nuisance right that it needed mm. to remove uh you know by using the birth control pills so when I started to learn more about my physiology, about my body, about my fertility, I was, yeah, just discovered another world. I had so much reverence. I think right away I felt it really resonated with me. And more than, you know, it's not just about charting your cycle. It's really more about this connection about, you know, with, with my, my body and myself. So uh, I started to dig into that, obviously learning more about pregnancy, about birth, um, and I don't know, for some reason, I always felt weird about birthing in a hospital or, you know, seeing an OB. Uh, I always felt that, you know, I'm, that it, like pregnancy is not a sickness, right? So I was like, I felt always weird, right? So anyway, I got pregnant uh, quite easily. And then um, I had the choice to either birth in a hospital, choose a birth center or a home birth. And at that time, we went with a standalone birth center uh, just because I didn't know what I know now, right? And it was, you know, it was cute, a nice birth center with a nice, you know, birth pool. And it felt good at that time. So we went with uh, that. And uh, so at that point, it was already a very radical 
choice, you know, in my circle and, you know, in my family, like everybody was giving birth in a hospital and with the epidural and it was like, what? Yeah, you know, you, what are you doing? What is that? You know, it was really radical. But at that point, it felt right for me. Uh, we, I think in, I was very lucky to have a midwife who was quite very, uh, I think she opened my eyes on, on many things. She, she actually was uh, Moroccan. And in Morocco, she was, uh, she used to be a home birth midwife in rural areas of Morocco. Then she immigrated in Canada and started to work as a midwife with this birth center. And uh, yeah, I, I think she, so she has, she used a stethoscope during my whole, uh, the whole pregnancy and the, and the, and the visits. And so every time she would have to talk about a test you know, because it was the right time, for example, at, you know, you're 24 weeks, we have to talk, talk about the gestational diabetes test. She's like, okay, I need to talk to you about that. Uh, this is this test, this is what it is about. You don't have to do it. And actually, this is my opinion, X, Y, and Z. So I ended up being like, oh, I don't want to do it. The same thing for GBS. So uh, yeah, so she she didn't push me for, to, to do any tests or anything. So it was, and in general, I had a great pregnancy. I felt amazing. I loved being pregnant. I was, I felt vibrant, healthy. I felt great. Um, yeah, until until the end. I barely had any uh, nausea in the beginning. I, it was uh, a great, great pregnancy. And uh, so I, uh, at 39 weeks and five days, I started to have sensations. Uh, and yeah, my, my birth lasted like from the active labor to the birth lasted around like 20 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, we, I hated going to the birth center, like the, leaving my home, going to the car, leaving the car. It was like horrible. I remember telling my husband next time I'm staying home. Uh, I was very clear for me. I just hated that. I also remember that I hated, uh, so the midwife wasn't very present, but I really was more comfortable just being with my husband in the room. Uh, at that time, we also thought it was a good idea to have my mother and my mother-in-law with us. <laughs> oh, wow. The double Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so we wanted to have them, to, so we flew them uh, to, to Canada to stay with us for the postpartum. Okay, because uh, I'm from Tunisian descent, my husband is from Algerian descent, and we take postpartum very seriously, right? They're sort of supposed to be here to take care of us. Um, and yeah, so when my labor started, we were like, okay, just come with us to the birth center, right? It was such a bad idea because I was really in my head, I couldn't like let go because even if they were not with us in the room, I was like, okay, like, are they comfortable? Uh, did they eat and you know is that you know maybe it's too long for them they should go home and you know I was I was not able to to fully to fully let go but anyway it was uh yeah I was not prepared for the intensity but still was such intense transformational beautiful and I was very yeah transformed by by the birth uh I thought that I wanted a water birth but I just hated being in the water I was just like I remember laboring. The, I I, I like laboring in the water, but then when my body started to to push, I was like, okay, I just want to get out of here. And my husband was like, but you wanted a what birth? I'm like, just just get me out of here. I just hated it. Um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, it was a beautiful birth, and uh, my postpartum and breastfeeding were quite intense. Um, and, you know, when I reflect, you know, on it, it's not necessarily the physical part I was intense. It's more about my transition to motherhood, right? Just realizing that, you know, I was our mother and I was, uh, and yeah, I had, this, you know, this baby to take care of. So it took me like a few months to adjust. But then when I, uh, yeah, adjusted, I just loved, and of course, still love being a mother, but I just felt completely, um at ease with it and uh yeah we co-slept like from the one and I breastfed it was everything felt very very natural for me I never I really followed my instinct as a mother I felt so uh yeah everything felt very very natural uh but I think this is where you know the, the programming started 
really felt uh, disconnect. It started really with disconnection with my body, uh, understanding the you know the female physiology. Understand that, uh, yeah, birth is definitely not a medical emergency. Even if I had, I knew that before. It just confirmed it. Um, yeah, so so I decided to. Uh, I had such a beautiful experience that I wanted to train as a doula. After that, so I trained as a doula uh, because I wanted women to have the same experience as that. So really, from a hero, you know, point of view, really, I wanted to save women, right? Um, so I quickly then uh, started to attend birth at hospitals, and uh, so basically, after the first birth I attended, I ended up. Uh, crying in my car, you know, for a couple of hours before going home, uh, was I didn't have the language that it was that I just witnessed abuse, but I just knew it was not normal. I knew it was definitely not normal. But uh, you know, they just teach you that you know it's not your birth, and this is their birth, and this is how it is. So they chose this. They just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you so you just continue, right? You, God. um, yeah, you get on with your trauma, and then you just continue one after the other, right? And you're like, how, like, how is it happening? Like, what is happening? Um, yeah. So, so I also, I also started to uh, teach women about fertility awareness methods and just really sharing what I, you know, my knowledge about that and making, you know, I really wanted women to feel that, um, yeah, they could take charge of their, their fertility at that, at that point. Um, so then we moved countries after that. Uh, we moved countries, we went to the Middle East for my uh, husband's job and um, I got pregnant. So we wanted to have another kid. We have like, there is a, a big age gap between my, my daughter and my son, like five years and a half uh and this was amazing uh and i got pregnant uh end of 2019 end of 2019 and uh i at that point it was clear for me that i could not give birth anywhere else than in my home uh i knew so much that you know about birth at that point that for me it was you know it's gonna happen in my home uh, where I live, unfortunately, I didn't have this option. So for me, the plan was to travel back to Europe, where uh, my parent, uh, my parents live, and to hire a home birth midwife. He would stay Wait, there. What do you, hold on. When you say you wanted to give birth in your home, but you didn't have that option, what you really mean is there are not midwives who would yeah. come to your home. Exactly. Exactly. And so there's no home birth. You you thought that you needed a midwife in order for you to allow birth at home oh yeah definitely definitely yeah. for me uh a home birth was with a home birth midwife mm -hmm. right there was no other so i knew about free birth at that point uh and i thought it was beautiful and uh but it was just not in my radar it was not for me because i had you know the option to have a home birth midwife right it was it was yeah definitely not something that i it was just not in my radar uh, so yeah, so we traveled back to Europe in January, 2020, uh, I traveled, I, uh, interviewed some home birth midwives, uh, and we decided to, I would come back like a few, a couple of months before the birth, uh, you know, rent Ooh, a place for a few months. Yeah. Very complicated, but it was, for me, there was no other option at that mm -hmm. point. There was no way I could give birth in a hospital. And uh, so, yeah, everything was clear. I would move there for a few months and then, you know, have a baby and then come back home. And then COVID happened, flight canceled, lockdowns everywhere. And I think I was in denial for a long time, you know, being like, oh, you know, like it can't be that <laughs> serious, you know, it can't be that long. And, you know, people will wake up and, you know, everything will go back to normal quickly, right? And uh, yeah, so the more my birthing time was approaching, the more I realized that it was not going to be the case, right? So um, I remember having like 
nightmares and be like, I can't, I just can't, you know, it was really scary for me. Like the, the thought of giving birth in a hospital was scary for me. And uh, just one night I was like, just, I'm like, I'm just going to stay home. God, isn't the programming so deep that right? it's like the most obvious choice is right in front of you, but it's not even on the table because we have been so programmed to believe you have to have a medical provider like god it's incredible right like right now i mean obviously this is just <laughs> completely different but at that time for me yeah it was not even an option it was really? that's it the only option available for me was that you know when i was going to move my family and spend i don't know how like, much just to <laughs> give birth to my baby right it is funny, right <laughs> Not so it is, yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, but at the moment, I had the thought, and I was like, "I'm. I can just stay home." I swear, Emily, it's like a weight lifts out of my shoulder, and everything was very clear, uh, straightforward. And I was like, "How didn't I, you know, think about that before?" It was so easy. It was such an easy, clear choice. Uh, of course, I had like doubts and fears come, you know, come up, you know, in that, that journey. However, I knew that it was the choice for me. You know, it was more about dealing with my fears than questioning that choice. So for me, it was very, yeah, very easy. So I, I just, at that point, I just needed to be... Um, to, to feel that, you know, other women were, you know, also taking that choice. So this is where I found you, I found the podcast. So I think I listened to every single episode of the podcast at that point. I had a session with you as well. And I remember after the session, yeah. I was like, oh, like it felt so normal. The way like we were talking about free birth, I was like, okay, like, you know, it's, it's not radical. It's, you know, it felt so normal and so right. Uh, I also, yeah, I also took the coffee get to free birth. And I remember like listening to like every single video and think that I didn't feel triggered by anything. It felt like this is what I thought to be true about birth. I just didn't have the language for it. Totally. Yeah. So that's when I, that you know it's there. truth. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no. It exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when my choice is made, I, I, I discussed it with my husband. Um, How does that and go? Yeah, yeah. And, and for him, it was, I mean, in the beginning, he had so many questions like, okay, but what if and what was that? But very quickly, like, look, it's your choice. It's your body. I'm here for you. Whatever you choose, just tell me what I need to do. Right, that's that's it. So, uh, and it was very, he was very supportive. The rest of the of the rest of the pregnancy, I had a beautiful pregnancy. I was very, I love the journey to just preparing for free birth. I think it's such a completely different journey, uh, because yeah, it's such, yeah. You you are just taking back everything that is yours right everything that is yours for your body for your pregnancy for your birth for your motherhood right and it, it felt really really good it felt right for me and um yeah so i thought i was prepared for anything but i was not prepared to go until 42 weeks <laughs> and <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my god this was challenging because my first was born like a you know right before my 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 week 40 so I was like oh you know probably 39 weeks or 40 weeks but then you know every single day when you wake up and you're still pregnant and you're like oh my god so it was really hard emotionally however I really knew that like I wouldn't do anything else than just wait you know I knew that even if it, it would go until 43 44 weeks I wouldn't do anything to I would just, you know, be pregnant and wait until my baby is ready. And just However, be miserable. <laughs> <that's> exactly. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just complain for an extra two weeks. It's fine. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, this is what, what my life was, you know, uh, for these two weeks. I just complain and be miserable and cry. And, you know, my husband was supporting me and telling me the same exact thing every single day, but I needed to hear it. And, you know, uh, but yeah, it was, it was, I, I never had any, any other fears or I, 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 there was never another option that was, that was, that felt good for me at that point. Um, and then the morning before my, my, my the week 42, I woke up still pregnant, still miserable. And this is where I went to the bathroom and, uh, there was my mucus plug. And I literally cried at that point because I was like, something is happening. Uh, I was, yeah, I was so happy. We had a beautiful day. It was, I had light sensations, but nothing, you know, nothing more. We had a beautiful with my daughter and uh, went to the pool, stayed home, like watched a movie. And then uh, at dinner, one of my friends came for dinner and everything stopped. All my sensations stopped. And I thought, oh God, another day. And then so she left. We put my daughter to bed and I, I told her, okay, we, I told my husband, we have to go to bed because maybe something will happen at night. And the moment I put my head on the pillow, this is where I had a huge contraction here. And this is where things started. So at that point, my uh, labor started, lasted for five hours. And even if I had a beautiful pregnancy the first time around, I think there is nothing compared to a free birth, really. There's nothing compared to like being in your own home, uh, being your own authority, nobody telling you what to do, where to go, touching you, listening to heart tones or anything like that. It was just beautiful. And I, yeah, so I labored between like my room and my 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 bathroom. And uh, it was at night, so my daughter was asleep. It was just me and my husband. It was, yeah, beautiful support. He has a very calming grounding presence and this is exactly what I needed at that point and um yeah I was just doing nothing more just giving him water not talking to me just you know holding my hands um while I was having the sensations um I thought I wanted another water birth went to the bathtub but didn't work out I was like yeah not for me <laughs> I'll never try that again um uh, love being in the shower the sensations were really, really, really intense. And um, yeah, and then I ended up next to my bed uh, when my body was pushing. And um, yeah, and then my son uh, came out, I think after like 30 minutes of intense pushing, hated pushing sensations, was really, really intense. And yeah, the sensation of just, you know, holding your baby on your chest and it's just you, and him for that, you know, time was just, yeah, beautiful and, you know, very hard to, to describe, but it was, it was just beautiful. Um, yeah. And then he latched really quickly. The placenta came out around like after 45 minutes, I think, but everything felt yeah good and right. And then my daughter woke up and we we're all together in the bed and it was just yeah, it was just beautiful. What's uh, interesting as well is that few uh, few moments later, I just felt another baby. I knew that I was going to have another uh, baby soon, and I knew he, he was going to to have to be a boy. So I just felt it right away. It was very very strong and yeah, very strange and beautiful. But I, yeah, I really felt his presence at that, at that moment. Um, yeah, and then postpartum was very easy. Breastfeeding was like, like a breeze. Uh, I was so happy and so, um, yeah, confident as a mother. Really right away, I think it gave me the confidence that I, you know, could do anything as a mother. I, um, you know, the health of my children, is not something that has to be given to anyone else, you know, than, than myself, right? And I think this has been my, you know, my journey in motherhood is, you know, I've, the way I birth gave me the confidence to be uh, the mother I wanted to be for my kids. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes in either direction, right? Mm -hmm. 
Definitely, definitely. So, um, so when yeah, do you, so when yeah. do you start working with women in the birth education, fertility world? Yeah, so at that point, I never stopped being a doula and doing like prenatal like education and fam trainings, but it slowly shifted to really uh where I I I really wanted to share what I knew to be true about you know birth and you know female body. Yeah, because when you self. took RBK, you were still like straddling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is definitely has been a shift for me. Yeah. So I, I started the RBK when my son, my son was three months old. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it was another like layer of the programming and really allowed me to work with women really in integrity and not, you know, with the baggage of what I yeah. learned to be true as a, as a, you know, as a doula in the system, but really work with what I felt to be true about birth and about, you know, women in general. It really allowed me to be like, okay, just now you have to be integrated. You have to share what's right for you, you know, and it, it maybe mean that you're not for everyone. For sure. And that's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you're not the right birth worker or the right doula for anyone. It changed completely my perspective on, you know, being a, uh, doula who wants to be like you know higher than you know okay sisters listen up this is really big and really important if you are a sovereign birth worker of any kind if you are working with women holistically totally independent of the medical system the worldwide sovereign birth professional directory is finally here I am thrilled to announce that the Matra Birth Directory is live. This is a long time coming and something we have been working really hard on behind the scenes that is going to majorly support the longevity of the birth liberation movement. We are contacted here at Free Birth Society on average a hundred times a week by women around the world asking for our help in connecting them to sovereign birth professionals. So that really guided us to create something that fills a major need. No need to be underground anymore, no need to be at a loss of how to find your clients, or in reverse, where to even start looking for a radical birth keeper. We did the hard work to create the network so that you beauties can all find each other with ease. So here's the deal. Through the end of the year, we are intaking professionals who offer sovereign pregnancy and birth support. So that's coaching, education, birth witnessing, any and all of it. Women who offer postpartum support of any kind, women who offer holistic fertility and cycle coaching, and women who offer birth trauma integration sessions. Now, this can be live, in person, or virtual. If you are a professional that offers anything within these categories, you need to head over to matrabirthdirectory.com and get yourself listed. If you're a woman or a mother seeking these services, you can drop your name on our wait list and be the first to hear when we go public. So all of you, but especially those of you in the professional world of birth, head over to matrabirthdirectory.com and join the network. Uh, to like from that point to be, I'm going to be an integrity and I'm going to call in women who feel, you know, who resonate with what I have to share. And it really completed, you know, completely changed my perspective. It really, the women whom I work with were really women who have the same you know mindset uh and i do so it felt or, or women who are really working towards that mindset and really you know needed another woman to 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 be with them you know uh and it felt yes such a complete change such uh yeah my work has been really completely transformed really yeah yeah and, and i felt that i was able as well to offer you know, my skills and knowledge, you know, on a, you know, I would say from the full spectrum, not, not just with birth, but also with, you know, womb wisdom and, uh, you know, knowledge about female physiology and postpartum. So really the whole, um, you know, life cycles, you know, of, of women, uh, but not from a place of, yeah, from a place of integrity, really, that's the, that's the word. And you are doing in-person work with women and virtual. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been doing both. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so and, in the Middle yeah. East, you it, it's um like how's it going? Like, is it is there just a lot of interest? Is it is it slow? Is it word of mouth? Like, how how's it going? Because I don't. I mean, I I make up that there isn't a lot of uh like really radical sovereign support out there definitely but i think women are uh more i think more and more women are understanding that uh you know there are options out there and i truly believe that it's you know i really thought that it could you know that it would start with you know birth education but i truly truly believe that it could start even like earlier yeah um, you know, when women start realizing that, yeah, they can definitely understand their body, you know, understand their fertility, uh, take charge of their fertility, they do not have to rely on birth control pill. And I think really this gives a sense of power mm -hmm. to women. And I think it's opening the, yeah, it's opening the path to a more sovereign life um you know so so not necessarily starting with birth but starting with really body literacy and and you know uh, education about the female physiology so yeah i mean it's 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 slowly there there is there is more and more interest i would say yeah definitely and yeah. so how soon does your second boy find you yeah so uh oh yeah i just want to share something just before that is that you know obviously we uh did not share our plan with uh you know many people before but when we share with our family right after you know i shared with my mother that you know my baby was born and he was born at home and she's like oh great so you had a midwife I'm like no 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 it was just you know me and my husband and you know and this started uh a series of conversation with my mother uh, about birth and um, I started asking more questions and you know I'm, I'm from Tunisian descent and my mom was uh, born and raised in a very little like small village in mountains in Tunisia and actually she shared with me that my grandmother was attending birth that time it was I thought it was uh, beautiful and uh, so they ne did not necessarily have like midwives but they had like wise women attending, yes. you know, birth with, you know, um, you know, for each other. And my mother, as you know, a teenager, so girls between fifteen and twenty, would attend uh, women postpartum. So when a woman would give birth, my mom would go and you know, care, take care of the house, cook for her, take care of her, take you know, play with the kids, uh, etc. So it was beautiful to have you know this kind of you know circle. And um, yeah, to know that about my like lineage, and um, yeah, the the fact that my grandmother was you know a midwife. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so I knew then that I, I wanted to have another another uh, another baby. I my cycle uh, my bleed came back uh, when my baby was fourteen months old. Uh, and after that, Wait, did you just uh, say forty months? Fourteen, fourteen. I was like forty <laughs> months. You're crazy. <laughs> I was about to like end the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> fourteen. Okay, that's allowed. Fourteen. 14. fourteen. Allowed. <laughs> it's allowed, right? I'm still here. I'm still yes. on. <laughs> when is the cutoff? I feel like after eighteen months. It's after weird. eighteen, yeah, yeah. After eighteen, yeah. me too. Like exactly. Even my my, he's eighteen months, and I'm like eight. Well, Even I after twelve with Sawyer, I just after twelve, I was like, he's a year. Like yeah, know, he's a year and some change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would take like a year, a year and a half, and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, fourteen. <laughs> No, no, so 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 after I was like, 14... that doesn't seem like you. That doesn't seem like your personality. Okay. So after no, definitely after four, yeah, after like a year and some change, right? I had a, my 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 cycle like resumed, and so we really, yeah, it was really conscious conception. I, I I took a few months to really take care of my body and my husband the same, and you know, we took call our you know uh, our baby, and then I got pregnant quite quickly and I was uh 40 at that point I was 40 in a couple of months I just want to mention that because I feel that you know like you know 
women, like or for women around me and for a lot of women. Uh, and a lot of my clients, you know, they feel that after 35, like you're done, like you're never going to get pregnant. It's like, well, they don't, they don't feel such, that they are told that yes you oh know God, such a yeah 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 yeah. they're told that they're told that after 35 and if you get pre pregnant this is a geriatric pregnancy and the whole the, the whole thing is just yeah just quite intense um yeah so so and I had a again a beautiful pregnancy some new gender first trimester uh, uh, fat. I just love being pregnant um, until th that, that third pregnancy I would say until the last few weeks it was quite intense I felt super heavy and I was just done uh, and um, so I really manifested and I imagined a birth in the middle of the night like my second but it was in the during the day <laughs> I know with all the like kids and the whole thing you know um, so this was quite intense to manage, but, but I had, I started actually, my labor started at night. Um, and I was, I, I just labored at, I, alone in my, my, in, in my bedroom. My, my husband was, uh, sleeping with our son and I just loved that part. I just loved being alone at that point. And then I woke up my husband at 6am, like, I think it's, you know, you know, baby will be here. Uh, quite soon so you know he mentioned the kids we have a help at home so she handled um, the kids so he could stay with me fully and uh, this labor I felt that they were I had at a moment I went to a very dark space for some reason I think it's I don't know what came up exactly maybe I had things to process but it was such a dark time at that point um I, it was during transition, but it was, yeah, it was, it was in a very, very dark place. I remember it was like rage. And I remember like punching the wall and my husband like took a pillow and he was like putting the pillow between my hand on the wall. <laughs> so, so I don't like hurt myself. And I was like punching, you know, the, the, the pillow. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and I gave birth in the same exact same position uh at my first left then my, my second like next to my bed on my old four my husband was holding my hands and um yeah he was born after I think 15 or 20 minutes of intense pushing again hated the like pushing sensation and uh yeah he came it was just so beautiful and placenta came after 20 minutes again very quickly very easily and you know and then kids came back we were all in the bed and it was just felt so normal and so beautiful and I think during my pregnancy there was no no I don't think there is a moment where we discussed where I would give birth with my my husband it was just yeah obvious, well no right no one yeah. has a free birth and then like <laughs> yeah you know, right you don't go the other way you don't go back into the system <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just like we were thinking about it after the birth like I think we didn't even discuss the birth. Yeah. <laughs> that point, you I know. know. That happened with, yeah. with Johnny and I. At, we didn't even talk about the birth, the entire pregnancy of our son. And then literally like a week before I gave birth, I was laying in, in bed at night. And I was like, wait, is there anything we need to discuss? And he was like, I don't think so. I was like, okay, great. Actually, yeah. I, remember, I remember I said one thing. I said, if a baby comes out not alive, do not do anything. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing I said, which is like dark, but it's the one thing. Yeah. I told him. Uh, I think we just, the thing that we discussed was just the logistic with the kids. Like, you want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or here, like, just that, that's it. And I was like, I don't think, uh, you know, we'll see how I feel. But at that point, I thought maybe I wanted the kids to be mm -hmm. me, but then it was just a no. Like, I was like, I just get them out of here. But this is, this yeah. is integrated. This is birth as an integrated experience you know it there doesn't you know erica the other day said to me she was like it's honestly just all very boring like i gave birth literally who cares <laughs> she was like it's not even interesting and i was like i know i love it like it's that and it's the most incredible miraculous epic thing ever but it's both at the same time it's just oh God, yes so normal so boring oh my god exactly you're like okay that's it. I gave birth, you know, life goes on, right? Like yeah. life continues and kids need to be fed and, just, you know, and just life continues and this is nothing. Yeah. As you said, it's just a, such a miracle, but at the end of 
day you're like okay that's it you know, like, you're just on. like a casual channel of god it's just like a total casual instrument of life love that <laughs> love that yeah 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 <laughs> but that is um, it that that is to be integrated it is both yeah 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 exactly and this is where you you like like ha like we sold the lie to women that it's this big thing to be managed and to be like take, taken care of and it's well, we didn't oh my god it's just not right it's just not that and um yeah and I think again I think this birth allowed me to again like remove another mm -hmm. layer you know of programming and you know it's it's always this is what I loved about birth and free birth that every time I'm journeying into you know something else I'm just knowing myself a little bit more um, I'm able to also support women in in a place of even more integrity and I don't care about you know the rest and I don't care about not being liked or bad. I just don't care you know I just do my thing and it's it feels great you know for me and yeah so do you do you see women around you choosing sovereign birth because of knowing you like because of that is the ripple effect happening in your community like it is so many other places I mean um yeah I mean I, I guess I guess so I guess it's something that I, I'm you know it's hard to say that you have your like whatever you're doing has an impact on someone else you know directly it's just hard to to imagine but I, I can, yeah, wait I imagine is it hard that, to imagine know? or is it hard to admit yeah, maybe maybe both. I don't know. I would think, <laughs> you know? I would think uh, yeah. if you're the if you're like the only or the first, it would be pretty obvious that you were planting those seeds in your community. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah, maybe it's hard to to admit as you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh and, and yeah, and just after that, I also uh did the blood mystery school mm. after my third birth. And again, it was another layer of you know how to support women in my community with you know all these beautiful learning and tools and you know from a place of you know sovereignty and integrity yeah well is there anything mm -hmm. else you'd like to share before we close um yeah I just want to thank you really really because yeah I really oh my god just such an impact on you know my uh journey from you know uh yeah from the moment I had this light bulb moment you know <laughs> at night where oh my god I can just do that right uh <laughs> yes so thank you and yeah thank you for what you're doing hmm. well thank you I hope you'll come back to MRF someday I will I really hope to and I hope to bring my daughter as well she's gonna mm -hmm. be 10 and you know she, I just oh, yeah, she's gonna be 10? yeah yeah, I have, yeah. This, I have this cute image of her of just there was just chaos in the dining tent everyone was just you know being nuts and she was just sitting by herself reading a book still <laughs> the same the, in the middle of everything it was so cute <laughs> she's still the same yeah uh, yeah yeah she was five at the time and she often yeah she tells me like remember mommy when we went you know to, oh, to the festival and yeah 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 so yeah mm -hmm. hopefully we'll come back Mm, I would love that. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your time and for your willingness to share these beautiful stories. Thank you so much, Emily. I hope you enjoyed the show today. You can support this podcast by donating to it through the link in the show notes below. And of course, leaving an awesome review on whatever platform you listen on. The more reviews, the more visibility the show gets. So let's spread the good word of sovereign birth. Don't forget, you can watch our podcast interviews on YouTube and see the women as they tell their birth and power stories. And you'll also find our viral free birth collection of epic raw birth videos on our YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We've always got a lot going on at Free Birth Society, and you can find out all about it at freebirthsociety.com, at Free Birth Society on Instagram, and opt in to my newsletter below. 
We offer courses on free birth, authentic midwifery, the blood mysteries, as well as one-on-one coaching, in-person retreats, and of course, our annual women's gathering, the Matriarch Rising Festival. Our exclusive private vetted membership, The Lighthouse, is definitely something to check out if you're looking for a community of wise sisters to get guidance from and to meet in real life. Together we rise, sisters. We must speak our stories, fully claim our lives, and support one another. This is the living revolution, and I am so grateful to be in it with all of you. I'll leave you with our gorgeous Free Birth Society theme song, Wild Woman by Aruba Red. I honor you for the wisdom you held, the ancient traditions of plant medicine and womb magic. I feel the spirit of the ancestors as I place my hands upon my belly. This sacred portal will be honored. Eons upon light beams of survival Withstanding the eradication of our power by design I will not allow the separation of our young to be forced upon me My sisters will no longer birth in captivity The picket line redefined from burning our wild women To paralyzing us and drugging our babes Strapped down in a clinical white bed Drying up the milk from our breasts Keep your needles My family will never again be doomed to chase those dragons or your poison. We reject your fear. We choose love. Everything with intention. Death, ascension. I will fly and bring her back from the start.